Hey YouTube and the coin community, thanks for watching the video, I appreciate you. This is a PCGS submission video. I just got back my 35th anniversary submission and it was the peace dollars, um, some type 2 proofs, not reverse proof, just the proofs, some gold type 2 $5 coins, and then um, the Philadelphia Morgans. So I knew the grades already before they even got through the front door. And um, I don't know, it, it was like the Mint sent me the coins too late to submit under a first strike. So I had to send the coins out in the original mailed boxes to PCGS. So that doesn't give you the chance to look at the coins in advance to maybe even see a flaw on one or whatever. It, I don't know. It's pretty weird when that stuff happens. But... Um, in order to get the first strike, you had to get the coins to PCGS within 30 days. And if you didn't get it within 30 days, then it had to be the, in the original mailed box from the Mint. So that's what I did, and I wasn't able to see the coins. So I was a little upset at a few things with this submission, but we'll look at a couple of coins here and drink in the best of the best. And here's the first one. It's an MS-70 Peace Dollar, 100th Anniversary, First Strike. So it costs you $17 to submit, and then it will still cost you $18 for a first strike. So $35 into this coin, plus the 85 original, plus some shipping, and I'm into this coin for, I don't know, about $120. Bucks. So very nice. The difference in a 69 and a 70 is about a $100 bill. Uh, all day long, depending on where the 70s are at on eBay and the 69s are at on eBay, it's about a hundred dollars difference. So that's a 70. I did end up getting six back at 70, and then I ended up getting uh, three back at 69. So there's a 69. The difference in this one from the other one is one grade and a hundred dollar bill. So that's the difference in those piece dollars. Let's set these aside. Um, drop those back in. So this one is a MS-70. It's a 21 Philadelphia piece dollar. I think this is really the only true piece dollar that was put out in this series because it doesn't have a mint mark. It came from Philly. And um, it doesn't have the privy. The CC, the O, the D, and the S are all privy marks. They're not really mint marks. So I think this is going to be the coin that's going to truly hold its value over everything. Though the CCs and the O's are really sought after. And the S's. So um, there's a 70 difference in this coin and a 69. is about a $100 bill. I ended up getting, I don't know, I think 5 and 5. I got 570s. And then I got five at 69 out of the total of 10. So that was neat. Um, it's acceptable. You can make a little bit of money if you're flipping these uh, at a 69, like 20 bucks maybe, 25. And then you could make a $100 bill if you were turning them right over and they were 70s. So let's look at these. I submitted... Three of the $5 gold proofs. I'll show you this one. This one came back. This one came back at a 69. So this is the, the type 2 gold $5. And if you look at the back, it's got that type 2 eagle. But I was noticing that these coins were put in a little crooked. And I thought that was super strange. We've seen some coins that have been around 10 years or so. And they get jostled around in there. And they're, they're not perfectly square in the holder. Well, visually it's square in the holder. But it's not square in the holder if you look at it to the side. So we're going to look at it more... Um, under the scope so you guys can really see what's going on. So I ended up getting two of them back at 69s. And then I got one back at a 70. 
Okay, we'll look at these coins a little bit closer. I'm going to show you the type twos um, that I got back uh, that are just the regular proofs. I have not really studied the price difference in the $75 coin and the $69 coin because those are coins that I'm going to keep. It doesn't really matter. I like fractional gold. So here's a proof uh, decam and it is a type two and it came back at a 70. Well, I ended up getting one, two back at a 70 and one back at a 69. So that's all right. That's, eh, you know, you're going to get, you're going to get one. It's, I think the mint needs to do a better job of what they're doing, but um, those coins are super neat and those will be keepers for me also. Let me change my view here and go to, um, let's get the coin view here. Let me just, let me do scope so we can really get in there and see it. So, let's look at the coin in the holder, and you'll see why I'm a little upset. Sorry about that phone, guys. So, if you look at the coin, you really can't see that this coin is not square to the world inside of this holder. But it's like, it's like one side's higher than the other and the other side is higher. It's really weird how it's setting in there. This one is not as bad as the other ones. But I do want you to notice this. Look at the, down here when you get in here, you paid a lot of money to get these coins to where they are. And notice there's a crack in this nylon here. And over here, it's also cracked. And then there was another flaw to this one where it was cracked up here in the corner. I don't know what they used to put these coins in there, but it seemed really, really strange. See down bottom here? It's also cracked down here. I don't know. It just seems like such a small coin. It would seem like they would take better care of putting it in the, the slab. Check this one out. This is another 69. And they're just not square to the world inside of this. I don't know if it's nylon or rubber, but look at the nylon, how it's torn up down bottom, and it's really rough if you look at it with your naked eye and you're looking up against the beautiful coin and you see that the nylon is tore up. It's really um, an eyesore. Look at this one. This is the one that really set me off. Look at the nylon up there in the corner. I don't know if it's nylon or rubber, but I think it's going to be nylon. But all up in here, it's all torn up, and it looks fine, but that corner's tore up, that corner's tore up, and then this corner is tore up. Also, look at the nylon, how it has these, tr these marks running through it. If it's not under the scope, they're really visible. And I think that this coin was just fought inside there, and I think it's uncalled for. This happens to be a 70. And I would be a little upset if I bought this coin from somebody or like myself paid to have it um, submitted and it came back at a 70 and then the nylon was all messed up. Let's look at one more thing here. Well, it's super hard to see how the coin is not in the nylon very well. It's like high on one side, barely in it on the other side. There is a middle part to that nylon that that coin is supposed to be laying in. And it's just not laying in there correctly. So I don't understand it. I've got to call in to PCGS to, uh, um, for them to send me an email so that I can submit my pictures. And so I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I know I'm going to send one of them back, but I'll probably send all three of them back in. And then I asked them, I said, well, so what is the turnaround time on these coins? And they said, we can't tell you turnaround time. If we accept the coins back to be reholdered, 
it can take still up to the 30 working days. So I've already waited 36 working days to get the coins back. And now it's probably going to take another 30 working days to get them back and reholdered. And then they said they would send me a um, UPS um, label so that I could send it back to them. So at least I don't have to pay shipping back to them and they're going to handle it. But I thought that was that was kind of uncalled for. And I do understand it's a workforce problem and it's hard to keep people working, especially with everything that's going on. So, all right. Well, I hope this helped you out. Um, the difference in all coins totally is supply and demand of what's going on. If if I were to sell one privately to my nephew, uh, the coin would definitely be down on the lower end of where uh, the coin's value would be. But obviously, if I sold something on eBay to somebody I didn't know, that difference would be way higher, meaning I might charge the full $100 to sell that coin out from a 70 to a 69 so if you have any questions about uh, this video, go ahead and email me. you got my email, bigflipcoins at yahoo.com. And if uh, you want to come in and hang out with us Friday, Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Mountain Time for the coin roll hunts, do that. If you like the video and the content in this video, please like and subscribe. I will see you all on the next one. Do something nice for somebody. Pay it forward every chance you get. I'll see you on the next one. Be good people. Take care.